Welcome back to Faces It on this Sunday morning. The Catholic Church has a new lobbyist to pursue and look after its interests at the state capitol, and he is a familiar face to television viewers because he's the former chairman of the Connecticut Republican Party, Chris Healy. And Chris, good to see you back here on the Thanks program. Thanks for having me, Dennis. Appreciate it. So this is kind of a big shift for you to go work for the church. What led to this? Well, uh, first of all, I, I, as you know, I've been a creature of Hartford for a long time, both as a political person but also as a lobbyist. And actually years ago uh, when I worked for another firm, uh, the conference was one of our clients, so I had some experience uh, with them. Uh, and at the time, uh, the pre my, my predecessor, Michael Colhane, very capable fellow, was retiring, heard about it, thought it sort of through the grapevine, applied, and uh, here I am. All, all, all the same guy, but uh, here I am, so to say. There are some who say the Catholic Church is under fire from the media and from politicians. Do you agree? Well, I think we've gone through a really uh, challenging period, there's no question about it, but we've emerged on the other side by being transparent, by working with uh, victims of these horrible abuse issues, uh, by reaching out to people of our faith, as well as people in the political world, and trying to communicate our, what, what our core mission is, is to, you know, to carry the word of the gospel forward in all our affairs. Uh, and as we've done that, and as we've reached out to people and, and taken you know, criticism and, and ideas, uh, we've come up, I think, with, with more cre a credible response uh, than initially. Now, in Connecticut, as you know, uh, we've been at this uh, trying to make amends and get justice on our abuse victims since the early 2000s. Uh, and we feel that every day we're trying to improve on creating a safe environment within our church, and we're doing that in all three dioceses with very rigorous programs. Anyone connected with the church on any level, whether they're an employee or a priest or a volunteer, has to go through a very rigorous program on reporting and proper behavior. Uh, but it's a daily, uh, it's a daily challenge, and we, and we meet it with great, uh, with great uh, responsibility and, and seriousness. What is the status of the church right now in terms of the number of people who call themselves parishioners and the number of people going into vocations? Because it's been on the decline, people say. Churches well, closing and... Yeah, I mean, I think the numbers show that, but I think we're also seeing another trend. We have, I mean, some of it's, it's you know, anecdotal, but uh, again, uh, you know, we, there are 1.1 million uh, Catholics uh, of varying, as, you know, some are, are uh, active Catholics, some are coming back to the church, some are not. Um, so uh, every day that we're trying to make uh, our faith more uh, viable to people that want to come back to the church or people that want to join us, whatever their background is. Uh, and I think it's partially due to a, a hunger for a, a spiritual life in this world. And we see a lot of violence, we see a lot of things that are going on around us that we don't seem to have answers for. Uh, and we, uh, we argue in the church that, you know, there's a spiritual life to be had that can, that can, that can heal a lot of this, uh, this problem that we have in our society. And we're seeing, uh, I've seen many uh, new uh, young priests that are coming into the church. I've been to many rallies, both pro-life and others, so I see young families there. So that's very encouraging long term. But, uh, you know, it's every day we have to go out and, and do our thing and, and make the church as, as inviting as possible. I think we're doing that. What, what is your role at the state capitol in terms of, uh, are there some new laws you'd like to see passed that would perhaps help the church? Are there some laws that you've been fighting? Well, as you know, most of the time, you know, most of what you try and do at the Capitol is to make sure that, uh, you know, that the, the, the fundamental concept of the freedom of, of religion is sacrosanct. It's in our Constitution. That's what we go into every day to make sure that people of, of any faith, uh, you know, pre are able to practice uh, without hindrance. Uh, we're also very concerned about the issues that we've had in the last session. We, you know, opposing a physician-assisted suicide. Uh, promoting the good works uh, of the pregnancy care centers. Uh, we've been working with other groups to uh, stop the uh, expansion of casino gambling and the re legalization of marijuana. Uh, and, you know, we go, and also to promote a Catholic education. Now, your previous guest was talking a little bit about the high dropout rate uh, in Hartford and other schools. So we, all, we argue that Catholic education provided to people uh, has been, is amazingly successful and has uh, saved many young children to go on to be productive citizens from every background. Well, so we're some... talking about those positive things. Uh, and again, you know, this is, as you know, in the business of, of public policy, it's communicating and working with people across party lines uh, because, uh, you know, in the end, the Catholic Church and all faiths are central to our society's uh, cohesion and health. And the more we promote that, uh, and not at the expense of someone else, I think the better society will be. Some could argue that the Catholic Church in some ways has abandoned the city of Hartford because they've also closed some schools there. They have closed some churches there. They, I don't, is there even a Catholic Church in the city left? 
Well, there's say you know there's, where you were married is say, say. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm talking about churches. Uh, yes, yes there's several. Uh, of course, there are. Yes, and schools. North we North. know there are plenty of churches. I yes. misspoke, but schools. Well, this, the education issue again is 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 uh, sometimes a function of demographics yeah. as much as anything else. And we, you know, we would like to be able to have uh, you know legislation that we that would make the tax laws even a little bit more forgiving for people that set aside money for other forms of education, whether it's Catholic education or other forms of education. We think that would would help tremendously. But we're, our efforts all the time to provide scholarships and, and aid to people that want to take advantage of that uh, moves on. Um, and the Catholic uh, Church is very robust in the city of Hartford and all parts of the city of Hartford. Uh, but again, you know, it's like anything else. You know, we have to work hard at it. And we, you know, the, the Archbishop Blair, the Bishop Casiano, Bishop Cody all work in concert on a regular basis to promote the faith and to continue the dialogue between uh, the faithful and the and the hierarchy of the church. Do you believe Catholic politicians should do more for their faith publicly in terms of voting for pro-life issues over abortion issues and things like that? Well, I mean, that's, that's, I won't touch that question. I will tell you that people of all faiths, uh, legislators, uh, this last session were very helpful, worked together with us. Uh, they weren't just exclusively Catholics because they understand how important it is uh, for the citizens to enjoy freedom of religion and the intrinsic value of having a spiritual life is. So where we can promote that, uh, we can protect that at the Capitol, we're going to do it. Chris Healy, he is the spokesperson for the Catholic Church and Connecticut Chief Lobbyist, former Connecticut Party Chairman. Good to see you back here on the program. Thanks so You've much. You've been on with it. many hats on this program over the years. <laughs> Thanks for watching Face the State on this Sunday morning. We'll see you back here for the news tonight with Kevin Hogan at 630, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.